focus on quantitative tightening. The Fed did reduce last week its balance sheet by $36 billion. You know, this was when it started at an $8.9 trillion you know, balance sheet. It has reduced by $108 billion uh, since it got started back in April, uh, with $36 billion of it being last week. So basically one-third of it you know, last week. Um, to take a look at this, you can see that you know, the peak was $8.9 trillion, and here's where we are today, down to you know, 8.75. This is a you know, reduction, but to keep this in mind, this is a reduction after a very, very long time frame where the Fed had blown up its balance sheet from the 2008 time frame of around $880 million all the way up to this $8.9 trillion mark right here. So $800 billion to $8.9 trillion back in April. That's an 11-fold you know, increase. So the increase has been massive. The reduction has been very small. You know, we went up by $8.1 trillion from 2008 to uh, earlier this year, and we've only gone down by $106 billion. So a very small reduction. I will put under the bottom of on the um, description area the link to this so you can follow this. This is the most important thing that investors who are thinking about investing in the stock market or when they should redeploy their funds that they raised earlier this year. This is the main thing that they should be looking at. So this link is to the Federal Reserve uh, website and it shows you exactly what they did uh, on the Wednesday of the week. They usually post it on Thursday night and then a little more easy to use graphical version sometimes Friday uh, on Friday. So you take a look at this. Quantitative tightening is the reversal of the biggest experiment that ever took place in the financial markets. During the financial crisis, you know, we started with about an $800 billion balance sheet, and we had some significant issues with Bear Stearns and Lehman, and then you know, Morgan Stanley and Merrill Lynch and uh, Citibank. You know, all those companies were on the brink of you know, having severe financial distress with in all likelihood at least another two or three of those being failures, complete bankruptcy, if the Fed had not, uh, and the federal government had not stepped in. You know, they did some extraordinary things with this uh, that were way too generous to the financial institutions, uh, executives and the shareholders of financial institutions who had you know, been running with these cowboys you know, for a while. You know, so everybody was making millions of dollars, everybody was happy uh, while things were going up, and they kept on leveraging up, and the leverage got too big, and then when it popped, you know, they got bailed out by the federal government and the Federal Reserve. And the Federal Reserve turned around and started buying assets that, quite frankly, they knew were worthless uh, to support that. Uh, the federal government came in and offered preferreds uh, without causing the you know, shareholders significant pain, actually saved them from going to zero uh, on many instances. Uh, so this is when you know, the, the current problem really got started in earnest. You know, 800 billion to 8.9 trillion. The, the move by the Federal Reserve and the federal government, you know, our, our debt deficit started blowing out and has continued to be a, you know, a blowout number. You know, we've got a bigger debt now than the, the economy. Uh, that's the stated debt, the actually treasury. Uh, we then all have, also have these unfunded liabilities, Medicare and Social Security. Uh, so we have a significant over leveraged economy, over leveraged federal government, a federal government that has made more promises than it can ever hope to pay back um, in either our lifetime, our kids, or probably even our grandchildren's lifetime. There's just no way for the federal government to ever pay back all the money it's promised. There's going to be reductions across the board. You need to be tightening your belt. I do expect that the quantitative tightening, which did accelerate last week to $36 billion, 
uh, will continue here for a while. The Federal Reserve has a couple of significant you know, problems. You know, inflation is running out of control um, currently. It is, you know, embedded in the system. You're seeing strikes and in wage increases. You're seeing significant increases in you know, commodity prices over the past year and a half. And this is all not a surprise. When you run crazy deficits for decades and you have a Federal Reserve that basically prints money out of thin air and you know, basically turns debts into cash, um, you end up with a lot more money sloshing around chasing fewer goods. Now, the good news and the reason this got postponed for so long is initially most of that excess liquidity flowed into you know, assets, assets like real estate and stocks and bonds. And also you had this cryptocurrency craze. You know, all those assets you know, managed to soak up some of the liquidity so it didn't go into the real economy, you know, creating inflation. Um, but, you know, with the assets, you know, having hit bubble heights and now having popped for cryptos and, you know, some of these speculative stocks, we are now in a situation where that liquidity is showing up in the real economy. We're seeing real inflation, real price increases, real wage increases. This is not something that's going to go away very easily. So the Fed is uh, in a corner here. Uh, they would like to um, do quantitative tightening and unwind the liquidity. That will help you know, slow down inflation, but it will also push up interest rates. The Fed became the biggest buyer of Treasury bonds. And if they're no longer buying, there's not a big buyer out there you know, the price on treasuries are going down. They've gone down significantly already this year, and the Fed has barely scraped the surface on quantitative tightening. The issue becomes you know, acute, uh, given that the, the world right now has some political issues, where China, which used to be a big owner of U.S. treasuries, is, is scaling back. You know, Russia scaled back a couple years ago. So we're in a situation where there's not going to be a lot of buyers of long-term treasury bonds, and in all likelihood, they're going to return to market-based pricing, which is usually around nominal GDP. Um, even if you think inflation can come back down to 3%, and nominal GDP would be running at about 5%. So we got a long way to go in treasury bonds. They're very dangerous. As treasury bond yields go up, the high PE stocks are generally going to go down. So I don't think we've quite reached the bottom. We're clearly over halfway, in my opinion. I don't think this is going to be a situation where you know, the Fed keeps quantitative tightening going forever. I think eventually they will blink. But in the near term, lower stock prices helps them within their inflation mandate. There is no mandate by the, for the Fed to keep stock prices up. And there is a mandate on inflation. So as stocks go lower, the Fed can have a little softer touch. When stocks surge or recover or have a bear market rally, they're probably going to accelerate quantitative tightening. The, the issue is going to become is when does unemployment become unbearable for the politicians, thus unbearable for the Fed. So keep watching this. I think we're you know, still in the early innings on quantitative tightening. So I'm continuing to maintain significant cash reserves in my own portfolio. As you know, this is not investment advice. This is only what I'm doing with my own portfolio for educational purposes. Uh, please take a look at buildingbenjamins.com. We can sign up and get text and email alerts. So you'll get this information as soon as it's posted. And you'll also be able to see our disclaimer where we talk about you know, risk and the fact that this is education uh, talking about my portfolio. So all the best. Stay cautious in my opinion and uh, good luck to you. Thank you.